I'm Justin. And I'm Blake. And this is the How Do You Figure podcast. Blake, who was our guest this week? We are joined again by Greg Hahn, a favorite of the show. How are you, Greg? I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited to talk toys uh, in the middle of all of this quarantining. Yeah, it's been way too long. It's great to see you. Uh, uh, have you bought any toys this week? Uh, not this week, but over the course of quarantine, I've been filling some gaps in my toy collection. What's, uh, what's the latest? Uh, so the latest thing is I purchased a, uh, this, this, it's not a battle beast, although I did purchase a number, I like nine or 10 battle beasts and a couple reproduction arms over the course of, uh, quarantine. But I, I got this thing called, it's called a trans megator, also known as animal robot fighter or Zutron defenders. And they're like these really bad knockoff uh, battle beasts where they have these derpy little arms and they're really, they're like really stupid looking. And I've been just eyeballing them on eBay for, for years now, never actually kick clicking, clicking the purchase button. And I just, I got fed up. I needed this in my life and I dropped a couple bucks, not too much, but m- more than I would normally on a, on an individual loose figure, but it, it didn't break the bank. I just like, needed to needed to round out that that little missing corner of the collection there. So I got one of those, a couple other random things, some trash bag bunch. I also grabbed a couple snailians lunar ticks uh over the course of this. Um and uh I you know I, I used to write for a show called Sunny Day, which is a, a preschool series. And I and I like to have a little a uh, token of, of of a toy of some kind from each of the things I write for. So I picked up some like toy cars from that just to kind of flush. Yeah. Round that out a little bit. feel like I have a little representation. I haven't worked on a show yet where there's been a toy. I feel like it's one of my last like achievements in life. I I've been trying for years to get Reno 911 toys made. Oh, <laughs> And it's not happening. So I think I'm going to have to find a different property to work on in order to be able to buy a toy based on it. Yeah, I mean, a dangle figure would be pretty sweet. It seems like a no-brainer that they'd at least do, like, Dangle, Junior, and Trudy. But, hey, I guess Quibi doesn't have a big toy uh, <laughs> toy marketing department. No, Quibi doesn't seem to have a very good any marketing department. I don't think they have anything to market. (laughs) It's one of the few things that's blamed its uh, success on COVID-19. It has been incorrect in doing so. Yeah. Uh, Blake, do you buy any toys this week? Uh, I am in Greg's boat, where the last episode we put up was on the day before the uh, city shutdown of Los Angeles on March 12th. It's how I've been keeping track of the days. But since then, I have bought several figures, uh, filling in some gaps of the like 40th anniversary Empire Strikes Back Black Series to get all the little bits that I didn't have in there. The R2-D2 and the Lando and the Bespin Luke. And uh, I got the Stan I Lee. The, uh, I saw the, um, the Trooper, the uh, Hoth Trooper the other day. Uh, from it's the right. Six Inch Black series. It looks fantastic. Yeah. No, you can tell as this series keeps going, they keep getting better. And it's why when they do these anniversary ones, you almost have to rebuy some of it. Like there's just a better level of detail. I don't think it's as simple as picking up old molds and putting it in. The Lando's face looks a lot better than other Lando uh, Black Series figures have. And But I think my favorite thing that I've done is I actually got the entire Ghostbusters Plasma series line of what I'm assuming. Which is the Plasma series? It's the new one they did that's just the four Ghostbusters, uh, Dana and Gozer, and it does the Build-A-Figure for one of the dogs. Oh, cool. And I'm assuming that this line would have continued and probably will continue if there was a movie that was out for it. 
because I kind of keep going now, as I often do with Ghostbusters figures, of where do you go from here? Because, you know, I rewatched two. You could obviously get a few more ghosts, a slime or a stay puffed. But I don't really just want the gray suits with the two on it, because it is preposterous that Ghostbusters went away, and when they came back in their movie universe, they were like, we need to remind everyone we're back. Put a two on all of our logos. <laughs> Oh, uh, Blake, you just don't understand the 80s. That was a 89, 90 movie, Justin. That was right at the tail end. Everybody loved throwing up the two in the 80s. That was just a peace sign. It. So you're saying, <laughs> is it, is, are we ripe? Are we finally in time for like a Peter McNichol? Uh, that's the actor's name, right? <laughs> it's Ghostbusters 2. Like one, have they done his character yet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, they did. They haven't. They've done the painting. Uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, he's desperately needed, I would say. Yeah. I think there's, there's a, just enough you can do, but I just get the feeling that we are going to get this great lineup of classic and new Ghostbusters. And because uh, movies and theaters are just a thing of the past. Well, the next lineup was going to be figures from the new movie. That's what I and assume. Speaking of, how crazy is it that if the world was normal, there would be another Ghostbusters and I think Bill and Ted by now. Bill and Ted would have just come out this weekend. Oh I no, I, I didn't e- I didn't even realize it had been pushed back. Everything pushed back. Nothing, nothing matters anymore. But the, the idea that Bill and Ted could be in our lives right now and isn't, that's pretty disheartening. At a time where we do need to remember to be excellent to each other, it is truly tragic that that is gone but how what ghostbusters which you got the whole series i got the whole wave so did you build the dog i built the dog the dog is the best part but now you kind of got to buy the wave all over again to have two dogs don't you you need two. And, the, and i'm assuming that that would have been the second build a figure that they would have just been like we got you come in and go but I don't know. No. I never assume with those companies. I feel like making you buy the same figures over again or putting the other dog with the Ghostbusters just in the two uniforms seems like a play. Yeah. I mean, well, the dog, it looked like was coming back in the movie, right? You see the like hoof or the paw right at the end of the trailer. Oh, I didn't catch that. So I think that that might have been the like, oh, and we'll do the new dog. It'll be the old dog. But they won't know that. It's an old trick the studios pulled. So Gozer's back? They're all back, Justin. All your favorites. Yeah. Gozer, including the, dogs. Including the old toys. It's cool that they did a re-release of the classic figures. I'm, I'm, I'm really tempted to do it, but I just feel like I'm, I, I need to keep my my limits on my toy collection or things are going to go crazy. But the, well, the re-release of the original figures is like, really appealing to me. I mean, that's the kind of trick right now. I am fortunate enough that I've been able to continue working through this. So I've had like what would have been gas money just lying around and almost every paycheck. I'm like, what if I just bought this giant snow speeder or like (laughs) maybe this entire wave of something. And it is that space plus money plus control plus one day the world will be normal. And I will want to have money. Well, I bought my first toys in a actual physical store this week for the first time. Oh, wow. Where did you go? I think maybe this year. Uh, I went to Target just to do my grocery shopping. I've been very, very careful about only going out like once or twice a week. Uh, I have, I'm immune compromised, so I'm high risk. So I can't go out like looking for toys. Um, that feels like it would be just insanely irresponsible of me. But I went to Target to grocery shop, stock up for the next couple of weeks, uh, went into the toy section, and I got uh, the new Elite Christian from WWE Elite 77. It's the uh, Vampire Brood version of Christian. I've been wanting this for a while. I'm hoping Gangrel is uh, not too far behind. Oh, they got him in Gangrel. Oh, you would hope. I love Gangrel. He was one of my favorites. Yeah. And Blake, he would come up from 
under the ground in a ring of fire. Yeah, he had a, beat that. He had a goblet full of blood, and and he's surrounded by fire, and he's got these two minions, Christian and Edge, at the time, and oh my, it was the coolest entrance in wrestling. The theme song it was great. Like a great emo music video. So I'm oh, all Christian. Uh, Christian comes with the goblet. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice, uh, nice accessory. I also, while I was there, I usually don't buy the new wrestlers. Uh, I pretty much just stick to the vintage stuff, but couldn't pass up Otis. Oh, uh, no, I need an Otis, dude. That is, that is an exception I will make. In, and by, that Otis is amazing. This is the uh, first Otis figure. I absolutely love him. He's the most entertaining thing on WWE television right now. And uh, I think he's going to be around for a while. So I thought picking up the first time in the line figure of him was probably a good idea. Plus, he's just lovable. Yeah, he's hilarious. Uh, so, Greg, the, since the last time we had you on, yes, you hit a, a collection milestone. Yes, a benchmark moment. I completed my... my uh, what's that? Yeah. Sorry, I spoke over you. Uh, yes, I, coll- I, I, I finished uh, my Food Fighters collection, or at least the, the, the humble uh, limitations that I put on myself for, for any collection. Uh, so I have all, all 10 Food Fighters, uh, all loose figures. They're not, you know, some of them are a little roughed up. Some of them are from my childhood, and they're not in, like, perfect condition. But I've got one of each of them, and they look awesome together. And actually, I even went out of the way and – you know, I had, uh, I have it right here. This is uh, Fat Frenchie. He's the, the French fry guy. I've had him since my childhood. You can see he's scuffed up a bit, but he was missing a helmet for, for since, I don't know when, since 1989, I couldn't even say. Uh, but I went out of my way to purchase a, a helmet as well to make sure that he, he fit with the rest of the gang and he didn't have a weird little nub at the top. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I got, I got one of each of them. And uh, they look they look awesome together on a shelf or in a cabinet or like great to take photos at, like in the refrigerator with them or something like that. Um, now I don't know if you've heard this, but there may be a new Food Fighters line. I I have not heard this. I, I I'm excited at the prospect of it. I'll say before before we get into that, I, you know, there are these other Food Fighters. There's the variants for a number of them that. I, I've told myself I'm not going to need to do that because that that will break the bank. I think four or five of them have like alternate versions that are also really cool, but uh, I would I would it, it would be too much. It would be too much. So so what about so there's a new? You're saying there's rumors of a new of a new series? Yeah, there's a company called uh, I think it's Meganopolis. They're like a retailer who's getting into making toys. And they've been able to get the rights to Barnyard Commandos. And oh. they're the new line of Barnyard Commandos. And they're also right now trying to get the Food Fighters line. They have a, a plan. They're having a hard time getting the license. They were they actually said on Twitter, uh, you know, contact Mattel. Let them know you want Meganopolis to be able to make Food Fighters. That would be that would be so cool. I mean, personally, I would hope they'd be in a very similar style, and we can just expand the line. But, but I, whatever happens, I'd be really excited to see because I think it has potential. I don't know. There's just there's something so toyetic about these these guys. They're they're forever one of my favorite toy lines. Yeah, I think uh, as much as I would like totally buy like a big eight inch or ten inch version of them getting new characters in the same scale to fill out the line, I think is the dream. Yeah, that would absolutely be exciting. And that, that food fighters group, Facebook group, you told me about way back when we recorded this last time I've joined that group. Uh, and there is a, a really small, but dedicated fan base who would absolutely be ecstatic for it. And they, they've even like, if you've been in the group, they, they kind of make their own custom figures. There's some guy Make they made like a chocolate slice of cake, uh, and and there's a there's a corn dog that 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 people have made, uh, and it looks really cool. I mean, I don't I don't really know what the deal is with distributing with distributing those, or but really 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 cool stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, as long as they're like art, uh, they can pretty much get away with selling small batch versions of stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I Aren't actually all art, Justin. Well, yeah, but you know, there's different versions of art. Uh, I was down digging in my storage unit the other day and I actually found two of my childhood food fighters. Oh yeah. Uh, Who'd you find? They are are in rough shape. Uh, or they got the pizza. Oh yeah. Private pizza. He's missing the helmet, but he still has the backpack. Oh, very nice. The accessories, the accessories sell for as much as the loose figures. That's crazy. Like, if you could just get one of the little plastic guns or a little backpack, like, that's 20 bucks, right? 20, 25 bucks. Jesus. Yeah. Well, in the apocalypse, that'll be cash money soon. Yeah, valuable currency. So You'll be throwing money. down food fighters at a bodega for some toilet paper by the end of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and I also got the hot dog. Oh, yeah, mean wiener. Now, I he has the hat. But yeah. I have no idea if this is his actual gun or not. Is that? Uh, do you know if that's? I can't tell you for sure, but there is a website I can point you to uh, when this is all afterward. I'll I'll let you know. Great. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is the first step in me uh, getting the Food Fighters collection back up. That'd be cool, man. They they're really great. It's a great toy line. Great you have inspired show. me to return to the Food Fighters. We're do gonna it. get that. Food Fighters show going. It's got to happen. We should, we should write the spec right now. We have nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> I there's somewhere there's a studio in Hollywood with a Food Fighter script on its desk and a, an old white man in a suit going, "I don't get it." Or it was just about to be green light, like green lit back in March, and then the pandemic hit. <laughs> like or, no more Food Fighters movie. My theory is that the Food Fighter script became Sausage Party. It's possible. It's possible. possible. Now, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Crossover. I'm two steps ahead of you. Uh, That's Greg, not that movie should have been. Front. <laughs> what was that? Any movement on the muscles front? No, I'm, I'm satisfied with where I'm at in my, in my uh, muscle collection. I have one of every sculpt uh, in various colors. Um, and I have, I mean, I'm, I'm continually collecting the, the non-muscle sculpts that were produced in Japan, the Kanikuman series. Anytime I see some of those online, I like to pick them up, but not over the last few months, I've been really on a battle beast tear mostly. So, uh, that's, that's what I've been building up. I've over the last few months, I've got, I want to say I, I picked up nine battle beasts since quarantine and then some, and some reproduction arms to fix up some of my other guys. And so that's really where I'm at. I even picked up um, a pin of one of the battle beasts and it looks just like the, just like the figure. And it's the same. It's like practically the same size too. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. And I, I got that from, I want to say it's eternity pins on, on Instagram. Check them out. They make some really cool stuff. So are you going to complete the battle beast, you think? I am 14 beasts away, so I'm I'm doing that. I mean, I'm not doing the laser beasts. That is an expensive, difficult endeavor. But I'm going to aim to get all I think there's 70 plus battle beasts. I'm 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 about a, a little more than a baker's dozen away. So Anytime I see a, a beast sale on like Instagram or something, I usually pick up a few, and that's how I've been accumulating them uh, over the last few months. I uh, also, while I was down at the storage unit, I found a couple of my childhood muscles. Um, I'm going to try to find all of my childhood muscles, but on that no, guy. Just, my meta- your, the metabolism is just not the same. The childhood muscles are a thing of the past. Yeah, they're we gone. gotta let it go. <laughs> I got the little that the sun, thing. sunshine pyramid, yeah. And a couple of uh, blue guys. Very nice. And then the other thing I found, muscles wise, is I found my old brain. Oh, uh, does it have the little clasps, or are they broken off like most? It of has. Them? The blue clasps, but not the red. The red is yeah. like halfway broken off. 
mm. the blue was still on there. Yeah, I mean that's a really difficult thing to. It was it was possible to keep those things intact because uh, also a lot of the figures didn't even really fit, and and they weren't and the and this this toy isn't flexible. It's a hard plastic, and you would squeeze a hard rubber toy into them. So they didn't really stand a chance. But it's amazing that you even have one of the one of the two sides <laughs> working. Yeah, like that doesn't work. This is not. This is very. They don't. No, yeah. It doesn't, it, it's not fit for many of the characters. Like some of them fit and some of them don't. And even then you're like, you're risking it any time you put someone in. Yeah, it's not working. Very uh, cool. Yeah, hopefully, maybe I can find a repoed version of the red and fix this up. Maybe. I, I haven't seen, I haven't seen those. Like I haven't seen any reproductions, but. If you could find it, I'd love to. I'd love to know because I also yeah. have my ring, but the little knobs are broken off. You, uh, you have also inspired me to get back into the muscles. So the food fighters and the muscles are a go over here. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Again, those are my, those are my top two of my top three toy lines like of all time. So very, very happy that you're getting back on it. Has there been anything new? released recently in this kind of scale that you've been into? Um, there are a number of lines that are more independent releases online. There's one that I haven't actually taken the time to purchase yet, but they're fantastic. They're the same scale and they're extremely detailed. The same scale, the same rubber quality, and they're extremely detailed. It's called Mythos in My Pocket. So it's a take on the monster in my pocket name but they're definitely more in line with the muscle as far as the the quality of the rubber uh, but they're all these like hyper detailed like cthulhu's and like cool monster types that i really should pick up a few of them but i haven't done that just yet um there's always like kickstarters uh and things like that i've picked up a few over the years um and i think kaiju big battle oh that is another purchase i did make kaiju big battle uh, Blake, I don't know if you're familiar with what that is, but I mean, they're, they're kaijus and they're battling. <laughs> yeah, so kaiju big battle is this, um, it's not quite a wrestling promotion, but it sort of is. It's basically Godzilla meets wrestling. They do these live shows. It's like a guar wrestling show. And so they've produced a line of kaiju characters that are muscle scale, very similar uh, rubber and color scheme as well. And I picked up the first batch of those a year and a half, two years ago when they first released them. And they have a Kickstarter right now for a, for a second series. And I've already donated because I'm going to need those too. That's great. I didn't know those existed. Yeah. That's they're pretty fantastic. Cool. They're pretty cool. We're living in a golden age of uh, fringe wrestling merchandise. We really are. Especially because, like, it's not just it's not just Mattel making the stuff anymore. There's the there's uh, Ringside Collectibles is is producing their own things. I want to say, and I just saw today. I think Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Brian Myers and uh, and Matt Cardona. Uh, they don't own those names anymore. Uh, those guys they're having figures released uh, with independently as well. Yeah, through uh, Super Seven. Super uh, 7. Yeah, Super 7 made those awesome New Japan figures recently. Yes. Fantastic. Really sweet stuff. And then there was that Jushin Liger figure uh, that wasn't Super 7. I don't know who released that. That was Storm Collectibles. Yeah, but they're all the same scale. Like, even though there are different companies making these things, they're all working really hard to make sure that they all fit together. And that's, like, the coolest part about it. Yeah, it was actually uh, with the AEW figures. Um, oh, the AEW the cool toys. They actually got Mattel had to lay off some of their sculptors, and uh, Wicked Cool Toys ended up getting one of the Mattel sculptors to sculpt the AEW figures. So not only are they in the same scale, they also a lot of them were sculpted by the same person who was responsible for sculpting some of the Mattel stuff. And it's great. Wow. It all fits together uh, when they come out eventually. I think I ordered those new Japan figures about a year and a half ago. 
<laughs> you ordered you shipped, ordered yeah. you ordered the first batch. Yeah. Did you order the second the Los Ingrenobles collection as well? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be that, those they're they're really great. And I the rumor is the next series may have like Zack Saber Jr. Uh, oh, I guess there's a Bullet Club series coming out too, uh, with like Tom Aloga, Tom Aloga, and uh, I think maybe Tom even Tom, yeah. yeah, maybe even Gallows and Anderson because they signed a contract with Super Seven. I heard. So I don't know if they're making like new versions of Gallows and Anderson or if they're going to go back and make like the classic Bullet Club version. That's really great. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's a dangerous game being a wrestling figure collector, isn't it, Justin? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is, is ever-growing. Did you pick up that Viscera figure? Oh, because yeah. That's the coolest. That might be the coolest toy I've ever seen. Yeah, I got um, right back here I have the Mabel. Mm -hmm. That was the first release from him. And, yeah, Viscera just came out. I haven't opened him up yet. Um, and of course, hopefully we'll get a Big Daddy D at some point. Oh yeah, Dude, you gotta get every have, incarnation. Yeah, every incarnation. <laughs> I doubt we'll get the other Men on a Mission members, though. Unfortunately, I don't think many people out there are clamoring for a Mo or yeah. Oscar. But who there's knows? No, there's there are no Oscar figures. Can you believe it? <laughs> shocking! It's shocking. <laughs> Blake, I'm sorry we've gone off on wrestling Please, again. no, I, I'm always so fascinated. It's always good to learn a second language. <laughs> uh, Eventually, I'll just pick it up like I've been listening to tapes on planes. <laughs> just so you know, Blake, uh, Mabel, who was part of a three-man like rap group, of course. was uh, brainwashed by The Undertaker and became one of his cult members, and his name was changed to Viscera. So that's why two names, two figures. Just okay. so you know. Yeah, no, it made, so made complete you, sense to me. Just so, so you have this information. At the, I remember the second the Adam Warlock. I could tell you a little story about Viscera. I went to, uh, this is like 2000, and I was in college. I, I want to say 2004. Four or five, and uh, we went to a local show at our college, uh, like in this in this gymnasium, and there were it was like all these like old legends who were not working with WWE. It was like we got a main event. It was Greg Valentine versus Beefcake. We had Larry Zabisco was there fighting David San Martino. Nikolai Volkov was there. Iron Sheik's in his corner. It's a great show, and in the middle of the card. It's Coco Beware versus Viscera. This show was bonkers, right? <laughs> but after the show, my buddy Lou is like, he lo He was always like a big Viscera fan. Who isn't? But he was like gushing over <laughs> Viscera. And so after the show, he goes, he goes, Vis, big Vis, I love you, man. I love you. And Vis is like, oh, you're going to make me cry. And, and my buddy Lou's like, can I have a hug? And Viscera hugs him. And it like envelops him. He like disappeared because this guy is 500 pounds at, his, at the peak of his career. Like when he was in good shape, he was 500. <laughs> it, was, I, it was absurd seeing it in person and like watching my friend disappear into this man's gut. <laughs> <laughs> I can think no one better to disappear into the viscera. <laughs> very warm, very inviting. It was like Especially the block. Especially when you used to wear the big, like, moo-moo type things and men on a mission. Yeah. Uh, Blake, I think you should be able to take this conversation anywhere you want since we've <laughs> gone <laughs> off on the wrestling. Well, I'm, I'm curious because I've been doing all of my buying in the quarantine through... Ordering, shipping, delivering. I uh, I leave the apartment maybe once a month. My entire life has become delivery. <laughs> uh, and I'm not immunocompromised. I just am very afraid of everything. Mm -hmm. Have you guys been 
like seeking out toys regularly the way you used to? Are you going to the Walmarts and the Targets or are you clicking around and maybe just looking when you go out for essentials or? Yeah. I mean, me personally, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm not even going to the grocery store anymore. I'm ordering on ralphs.com and picking it up outside the store. Uh, and if, if, and when we go to target, it's like, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, I haven't ventured down the toy aisle in months. Like I have not gone and seen anything in person. I'm only ordering off of, off of eBay or I'm, you know, contacting people on Instagram, making some purchases that way. Not at all, you know, yeah, not at all browsing the toy aisle. Like I always used to do. Well, there's also just less there. Like I, I'm usually looking at Star Wars figures and Marvel figures when I'm going to the targets. And then I look at the NECA stuff and because there's just nothing coming out in any of these pipelines, most toy aisles I feel like are just vacant because we're getting to this weird place where we're running out of content that's ready to be shown to people and we're not shooting anything new. So like any, I don't know, Mandalorian season two, Ghostbusters, whatever else would be coming out and hitting shelves around now, but Black Widow stuff, uh, Wonder Woman stuff. I think we're going to have an even bigger gap next year. Oh, yeah. Because once these movies do come out, a lot of this merchandise has already come out. Like, I don't see them re-releasing the Black Widow figures or anything like that a year from now. No. There's even even, uh, Top Gun 2 toys that are out on the shelf. Like... It's a mess. It's a mess. What style figures are the Top Gun toys? They're just Top vehicles. Just the jets. Oh, like jets and stuff. Yeah. Okay. That Not the sense. volleyball place that we've all dreamed of. Well, it's also weird because now, like, normally this is the time of year where we'd be packing our bags and heading to Comic-Con and getting in line with people and trying to get whatever figures are there and... It's like, you know, NECA's releasing them day and date on their site and at Walmart, which, you know, you got to do something with it. But I, I never really thought I'd see the day where suddenly like all these con figures, people are just sort of like, I don't know, here, uh, order it from us or like maybe just go get it regularly. It doesn't really feel as exciting, but here it is. I'm very frustrated. Uh with the NECA stuff. And I know there's been a lot of negativity and a lot of hate online this past week toward NECA and Randy because of the way the turtles were released, but you know, they're doing the best they can. Like I, I I hate seeing the way that these guys are getting trashed. Because well, I'm sorry, but those it's not 90s, like NECA doesn't want to sell their product. They're trying to get the product out to you. It's just very difficult right now. And like, how many times have they done? Have they get? And, and I'm as frustrated as the next person. I haven't even seen an animated turtle in a Target store. Every time they're online, they're gone in seconds. But I don't know. That's part of the game. But these '90s movies ones, those were Comic Con exclusives three years ago two years ago and then they were in game stops and then they were online for a long time. And then they were at GameStop again. They weren't, you've had a lot of chances to get them. And NECA's always been like kind of an indie smaller production. They're dealing with licenses and big box retailers. I I don't think they definitely are. And they, they're dealing with all these restrictions that Playmates have put on them with the Master Toy License. Uh, they have to jump through so many hoops because of the restrictions that Playmates puts on them that they end up being put in a lot of these kind of tough situations. The really frustrating thing for me, and this is kind of just for me, is that this year's Comic-Con Turtle exclusive is the Coming Out of Their Shells Tour 4-pack. This is, that is a weird ass toy. I yes. love it. <laughs> I, it is something I have wanted. 
for 30 years. <laughs> and I am thrilled that they're making it. Any other year, I would just stroll up to the NECA booth on preview night at Comic-Con and be able to buy this four pack. But this year, since there's no physical Comic-Con, it's all <laughs> online and it's not going to be as easy to get. So uh, I, the ones that have been released the last couple of weeks have been impossible to get. There's a theory that people are setting up bots to kind of automatically buy all the stock when they first come in. Which is definitely happening. But I'm wondering, because the response to the coming out of the shell tour turtles was mixed to say the best. And I'm wondering if they'll be easier to get than we think, that that's just such a specific... I thought that at first, too. I thought this is so specific. There's a lot of people that, for some reason, like the, like, gritty turtles. Like, I'm not that guy. I like my turtles as wacky <laughs> as possible. So this is right up my alley. But, yeah, I saw a lot of people that were unhappy that this set was, like, super wacky. But I think that's not going to matter because the scalpers are going to pick these up to flip them, whether they like the set or not. Yeah, and also, yeah. I mean, it's just it's a popular toy line. Toy uh, turtles are always going to be popular, no matter what they release. They can get. I mean, they've gotten as obscure as any other toy line ever has, and it hasn't stopped people from being excited about it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you do you do something like a throwback to the the live stage show. And, you know, you'd think not that many people would want it, but, but especially now that it's, again, there's no, you're not going to Comic-Con. That means all of the Turtle fans are at their computer ready to go. And it, it'll, they'll wipe them out, man. They'll definitely sell it out yeah. in minutes. My Comic-Con privilege being stripped away <laughs> from me. <laughs> it's anyone's game now. But I'm not going to lie, Justin, more than those Turtles, which I love, I want that Olympics gremlin. The Olympics gremlin shouldn't be a problem. I want it so badly. <laughs> the Olympics gremlin is going to be available on NECA's website. I think all of them are, aren't they? All the exclusives are there. No. The Coming Out of Your Shells tour is just a target. Um, because they, they don't have... NECA doesn't have the restrictions with the gremlins and the predator and alien stuff that they have with the turtles. Oh, so I just took a I just took a look at this toy. This is awesome. They're great. <laughs> He's got an Olympic torch and a and a little scuba mask and little tights. Oh, and he's got like little flippers for the pool. Oh, that's awesome. That's and this a- was an ad- the the toy is based on an actual uh, piece of advertising for the movie. Um in the summer of 84, tying in with the 84 Olympics. That's I fantastic. love, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, well, that's very similar to my, like, the advertising version of Macho Man with the Slim Jims, where I'm like, I want these weird advertising movie crossover promotional figures and these, these moments of pop culture that we kind of just forget about. There, this isn't a gremlin in any of the movies. It only exists on art for the Olympics. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want for my exclusives. That's why NECA always does such a good job. I like all of them this year. I really was like, what are they going to do with Alien and Predator? And this lightning Predator and this just glowing alien. I'm like, well, they've got my money. I also like... Provided the bots don't get that. I was surprised. I thought, like, how many people are going to drop, like, $150 on a four-pack of turtles when so many people are unemployed? But this doesn't seem to be stopping <laughs> anyone. It's never, it's never stopped toy collectors before. Yeah, I, uh, I will admit I kind of put my health in risk to get this Otis. I, I didn't <laughs> have to go to Target in person. I uh, made this very stupid <laughs> decision, too. Uh, but, Blake, getting back to your original question about, like, how, like, our toy buying habits have changed and stuff like that, 
like I said, that was the first time I've been in a store that has toys since March. And it's super frustrating because I've never had this much free time in my life. And there's nothing I would rather be doing right now than going around and hitting toy stores. Like talking about the neck of turtles, I'm positive I would have the metal head at least by now because I would have gone to every Target in California if I wasn't working. <laughs> um, I was telling friend of the show, Mike Carlson, yesterday how we're going to have to end up getting like hazmat suits to go into Target and go up and down the coast to find these turtles. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, I don't even know. Like, Because the other thing about Target is that their website sucks. Mm -hmm. Like, even when you're not looking for toys, I was buying some uh, sand for a sandbag for an umbrella that I have on my balcony. Very fancy, but not really. It's a three-bedroom apartment in Los Angeles with a small balcony. But I didn't want to fly off and destroying things anyways. Finding sand online at Target's website was a daunting and exhausting task. (laughs) Because you're just like, sand. And they're like, did you mean pink sand for a sandbox? And you're like, no. And then the next thing is a bunch of ads for sand from other places that you don't want. And then there's those weird fake articles that are like, here's why nobody will hire Tom Cruise anymore. And can you believe this actress did this on set? And then you have a virus. And the Target website used to be great. Like, It was only about a year or two ago that they started integrating in third-party sellers. And that's when the thing really just went nuts. Like, it's unmanageable at this point. So the turtle figures, they're going to be available on the Target website, but probably sell out immediately, and then it's like crapshoot, run to to your local Target. Is that the idea? Yeah, so basically it's a – you have multiple lines – multiple turtle lines that NECA is making right now. And you have figures based on the movies, and those are only available at Walmart. And then you have figures based on the 90s cartoon, and those are only available at Target. And then the Coming Out of Your Shells tour was supposed to only be available at Comic-Con, but because there's no Comic-Con, they made a deal with Target to sell it through Target's website. And is there like an official time announced? Everybody's like already ready to make the purchase? Yeah, every Thursday there's been uh, a new release. So like uh, last week it was Target put up Metalhead and a Casey Jones Foot Soldier 2-pack. And they sold out in... People were saying 10 seconds. seconds. Justin, I was on there trying to get up. That was, that was ridiculous. Seconds. Seconds. Oof. That's and then rough. next next Thursday is uh, um, Slash and Leatherhead. I think the Comic Con exclusive. The twenty third are the Comic Con exclusives. These yeah. are the car, the animated series looking ones, right? Yeah. Dude, that Leatherhead is f- so cool. I know. I know. I've been waiting for that figure for years. They've been showing it at Comic Con mm-hmm. for like four it. years now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think I'm not worried about getting those. Like the animated figures, I feel like eventually the supply will meet up to the demand. But I, it was just the other day uh, that they got more of the Bebop and Rocksteady from last year back in stock. And I've even seen them get the Shredder and Crane two-pack back in stock. Oh. So I, I feel like eventually I will get those. It's the coming out of your shells tour Comic-Con exclusive. Which, the more I look at these things, the more I'm like, man, these are great. These are ones that I might not even take out if I got them. These are ones that I'm like, I don't know, man. I might just put them somewhere and be like, look how great they are. I went to the tour. I went and saw them at the Universal Amphitheater, uh, actually right across the street from where my now apartment is, uh, back then in 89, or 90, it was 90, because it was 30 years ago. And, uh, yeah, I'll never forget it. And it comes this accessory pass with, like, a backstage pass and a shirt and a ticket and picks. Oh! 
they're they're pretty great. They got the the denim vests. Oh, they're they're really cool. <laughs> they're, I mean, these look better than the rubber suits they were wearing on stage. And fun fact, uh, my boss on Reno Nine One One, Ben Garant, was one of the turtles on that tour. No, Ben Garant was one of the turtles. That's awesome. And Michael Ian Black was one of the other turtles. No way. <laughs> That's amazing. I guess if I get this, I kind of will have a Ben Grant figure after all. There you go. I have to just imagine he's in that suit. Oh, he's in that suit. Uh, yeah, the place where I saw the coming out of the shells tour is now a Harry Potter ride. Well, that's not as fun. No. I don't remember the creators of the Turtles ever saying horrible things on Twitter. It's a good ride, though. It's a good ride. Even though I'm not like a Harry Potter guy, I still like the ride. Tell you, man, this this lightning predator from Predator Two is fucking cool. <laughs> Speaking of Comic Con, Greg, would you have gone down to Comic Con? Uh, I have a tendency to uh, feel the FOMO really hard if I don't. So I would at least go down for a day. I mean, I it's hard to say because you know around the time when I would have thought about buying a hotel room is when uh, this all went down, down and it was like inevitably not going to happen. And even if it did happen, I was telling my, I was saying as early as early March, like there's no way I'm going. But prior it, to that, it, it, it almost feels like an obligation. It just, uh, just, you know, work wise. It was easily yeah, the first true. thing when the, when the pandemic hit, because I need movie theaters for my job in market research and film and TV to exist. So the first question was, will the theaters close? And they did. And then just me and my friends at work who love going to Comic-Con and work there and do other things there and have panels were like, what about Comic-Con? And we immediately all were like, well, we're just not going. <laughs> well, we're just not. Yeah. That w- that w- you, I get a cold when I go there normally. <laughs> like... Oh, yeah. Every year, without fail, I come back sick with the con cold. I mean, it, it doesn't be, matter. Yeah, it would be impossible to go there and, and feel like I didn't just step into a giant, sweaty Petri dish. No, and I mean, with all the other stuff, you see all these people who won't cooperate in these viral videos and these... Ma- if three of them were at Comic-Con, it would, ru- it would ruin everything. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. So I don't know. It's a bummer, but I, I feel like this digital Comic Con is a very interesting experiment. I don't know that I feel like they're doing everything they could be doing with it. Uh, I feel like everyone is kind of doing this like rush to normalcy, and instead of going, how do we make a unique experience online? They're trying to go, how do we mirror being at Comic Con on the internet, which you just can't do. Yeah, like that. It's the same, um, I guess, the module. If you're if you're d- doing a movie online, we can't provide the same service we would at a theater because we're not at a theater. And instead of really trying to figure out how to make that work, I feel like they're just going. There's timed panels and be in lines, and a part of me is like, well, why don't you just have all of these pre-recorded panels that are can, that can be like smaller creators, diverse creators. This is where you can boost up black, Asian, LGBTQ, all of these other communities up. And then if you're going to have a big panel like New Mutants is getting one, get the cast <laughs> in the Zoom room and have a moderator who's like managing that room so that people can still talk to them. They would at con. Like, why is that a recorded thing? Just hop on and do what we're doing now. You can get 300 people in one of these things. That's more people than would have gotten to see it in person. I just feel like the whole thing wasn't was could be so much more. And well, instead speaking of, of time, Blake, we have a Comic Con home panel coming up this weekend. <laughs> oh, I'm aware, and I'm I love to be part of it. I really I've been saying to everybody, it's very oddly exciting to be even a small part of what will be a Comic Con that goes down in history. That we're, we are part is- of that grand experiment. Our panel is Saturday, 
at 4 p.m. Yeah. But then it'll just live online after that. So you don't have to be online at 4 p.m. Saturday to watch. No. And and then then we'll get to put it up on the podcast channel and do all of our stuff with it. I mean, I don't see why they won't. Couldn't they? I mean, I assume they're going to do that with all the panels, right? Like just throw them up online afterward. Unless it's really important to keep that like exclusivity idea to really make it feel like Comic-Con. Like you missed it. Sucks for you. I mean, that would, that's what I mean when I'm like, are they going to try to replicate? Like, Is is Marvel going to stream Black Widow and be like, if you weren't the first 20 in the Zoom room? <laughs> no, there's no chance they would do that. But like, what are, like, I, on the yeah. other hand, though. Should what else are they going to do? With me? So what panel are you guys doing? We're doing a panel on the history of Comic-Con toy exclusives. Oh, and, that's awesome. Uh, our guests are going to be uh, Bill McKenna from Mattel, Randy Falk from NECA, and uh, toy designer Rokum. Oh, yeah, big names. It's very exciting. Uh, we recorded it like a month ago, I think. I don't know if that's uh, like a dirty secret or not. Like, I don't know if they were to be like, and it's live. <laughs> but I think the original intention was to make people think it was live. And then I saw like a Deadline Hollywood article a week ago that was like most of Comic Con at home pre taped, as if that was some sort of like scandal. So I think we're okay with telling people pre taped. Um, and yeah, it was fun. It went great, and I'm looking forward for people to see it. That's really exciting. If you ever want to see Justin without a beard. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare scenario, me without what a beard. Time. Greg, I didn't know that we were going to have to record this thing so soon. So I had shaved uh, for mask safety, yeah. thinking that no one would see me without this mask on for months. And then all of a sudden, it was, you have to record this thing this week. So oh, there man. I am on this panel, unshaven. I look like a monster. You're just like, you're like a big baby. Yes, it's horrible. That's why, oh. I don't, that's why I don't shave. I would just look like a, like a, yeah, like a four-year-old version of me. No thanks. <laughs> so if you want to see that, tune in to the Comic-Con panel Saturday at 4 p.m. Will do. Uh, Greg, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at It's Greg Han. And since you're all toy fans, follow me on Instagram at It's Greg's Toys, because all I do is post pictures of my toy collection and nothing else, I promise. And Blake, outside of Comic-Con, where can people find us? Uh, They can leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify or Google Play or wherever they're listening to the show. Then they can head over to Facebook.com slash group slash How Do You Figure Podcast. We're also on Twitter at How Do You Figure PC, on Instagram, How Do You Figure Podcast, and I believe that that is it. And now you'll be able to see the video version of our show on YouTube. Uh, this is the very first one. I guess we should have said that up top. Oh, okay. I'm very excited to see Greg. <laughs> I wanted to hey, jump internet. right into it. Hey, Internet. Right. What's up? 